So my last video on bypassing the OBD2 knock sensor was uh, kind of confusing and I didn't actually show the plugs. So I'm gonna remake that video right now and I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do to get your car to run without a check engine light if you have a JDM bottom end or an OBD1 bottom end in your OBD2 car. Um, you know, you might ask why not just put a knock sensor on it. Um, say you're doing like a mini me like a D15 V7 with a Y8 head being run with OBD2 Y8 harness and ECU. Um, there's there's just no no place to put a knock sensor on the crank. Uh, there's just no mounting bolts for it. So what you would do is this bypass trick and I'm gonna show you what you need to do right now. So you get, get in your Civic or Integra or CRV or whatever OBD2 vehicle you're doing this on and you're, you're gonna have to find your ECU and on these 96 to 2000 Civics the ECU is in that kick panel down there so passenger side footwell kick panel take off that uh, that little fastener there and I think there might be one more kind of up there uh, you pull the panel back and then you look for one of these blue plugs. OBD2A, which is 96 to 98, or OBD2B, they'll both have this same looking blue plug, like the the pinout pattern is, or not the pinout pattern, but the like the physical pattern of these plugs are the same, but the actual pinouts of like where the pins go are, uh, are a little different. So I'm gonna show you how to do it on both an OBD2A and OBD2B ECU plug. So you're gonna need uh, two of these quick splices. They look like that, you just slip the wires in and then you squeeze down with pliers and that metal bit uh, cuts into the rubber coating and then it connects the two wires together. Um, I got this bag on eBay for like three or four bucks for this whole thing. They're kind of cheap quality but they work so that's one, uh, one way for you to do it. But uh, yeah, let's get started. All right, so on an OBD2A, so 96 to 98, you're gonna wanna find the C1 and the C4 wire. So that's gonna be the blue with red stripe for C1 and then the yellow wire for C4. And then go ahead and splice them together. So this is what it should look like. Um, of course, though, your your two wires would be you know going off into the, uh, into the engine harness loom but uh, these are just cut for demonstration purposes. So what you wanna do is you wanna cut the C1 wire after the quick splice. So I believe the C1 wire goes to the original knock sensor on the crankshaft, which we're not using. So you're gonna wanna cut the C1 wire, which is the blue with red stripe. And you just wanna, wanna cut it after the quick splice. So now all you have all you have is this yellow wire that goes to your distributor and uh, your ECU will use that to to mimic the knock sensor signal from your crank. So on to the next two, C11 and C14. Uh, interestingly enough, this picture seems to indicate C14 is a white wire, but on mine, C14 is a black wire. So C11 will be directly under C1 and then C14 will be directly under C4. So it's the yellow wire and then that, that black one there. But I don't think the color really matters. We're just going off wire position. So that is the C14 position. So go ahead and give it a splice. Yours might be black, yours might be white. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, it's all about that wire position. So go ahead, give them a splice, and then cut the C11 wire after the quick splice. So here's what it looks like. The two of them spliced together, and then the C11, which is your farthest left wire, spliced after, or cut after the splice. So you, you want your 11, and you want your one cut. Your four and your 14 go to your distributor and that's where your ECU is going to get your crank fluctuation sensor signal to piggyback off of. So 
I know these are cut, this is just an example, but your 4 and 14 continue on to the distributor or to your engine wiring harness. Uh, so yeah, that's OBD2A, so 96 to 98, and I'm going to show you OBD2B, 99 to 2000, and I believe 2001 for Integras. Um, I'm going to show you that right now. So for OBD2B, you want to find the C22 and the C29 wire, so it looks like the, uh, the blue with red and the yellow. And go ahead and splice them together. So here we go, blue, red, and yellow spliced together, and you're going to want to cut your C22 wire after the quick splice, which is the blue, red. So it's the blue, red, just like we did on the OBD2A. So cut that after the quick splice, and of course this yellow one continues on into the engine harness. So next, give the C30 and C31 a splice, splice those guys together, and it looks like it's the white, red, and the black, which uh, coincidentally was the color scheme of the OBD2A wires that I spliced together even though the picture didn't show them as black and red white or white red uh, but yeah give them give them a splice and here we go C30 and C31 wires spliced together and you cut off the C31 wire after the splice so you cut the white red wire and of course this black one continues on into the engine harness uh, to go to your distributor but uh, yeah this is OBD2B this is how it looks with the splice and cuts so you splice these two wires at these points and these two wires right there then you cut some wires off and you're good to go and coincidentally well I guess not coincidentally Honda keeps the wiring colors fairly similar these are the color wires I cut so it was blue red for both OBD2A and OBD2B and then white red for both OBD2A and OBD2B so you know just double and triple check that you're cutting the right wires uh, what, what you're doing is you're cutting the signal wire coming from the crank fluctuation sensor mounted on the oil pump so that there's absolutely no confusion and the ECU is only reading signal from the distributor so yeah pretty simple like I said this plug is in the passenger side footwell pop off the uh, the trim cover and unplug it from the ECU do your splices do your cuts plug it back in and you will not have a check engine light for your crank fluctuation sensor. I will uh, leave a link in the description for the website I used. Um, if you have any questions, post them up. I'll try to help you. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And as always, thanks for watching.